Hey there, I hope you're doing good. I am going to do a few little projects. Basically, I'm going to use this video is mostly going to be about Arteza, and uh, I highly recommend their acrylic paints. This is the 24 piece paint set that I have, and I also have the 60 piece set, which are, you know, is a little bit larger tubes. These are 0.74. Well, all, all the tubes are the same. This is the 60 piece. This is the 24 piece. And I took the colors out of the 24 piece and this one came from the 60 piece set because I needed more purple because I've used up the purple in the smaller one, most of it. But I'm going to do a purple, a blue, a red, an orange, and a yellow, and a green. So six different colors. And then I have a little box right here of their 14-pack um, canvas set. And what comes in the pack is 14 little 4-inch canvases. And they have a little easel that comes with it. So there's 14 canvases with 14 easels. These are 4 by 4 inch canvases, regular thickness. And I am going to open all these up and get them out of the packs. And then I'm going to mix up my paints and fast forward through all of this so that you can watch. And, um, and then we'll get to pouring. I'm going to pour all 14 of them at one time. And also, I just wanted to show you, I'm going to, this is going to be for another video, but this is going to be a clock that I'm going to pour. And with unprimed wood, you have to put a prime coat on it. So I put gesso on it, or you can do a spray uh, primer, but you've got to do something to seal the wood. And so I have put gesso on one side and sanded it after it dried, and on the edges and on this side, and it's not quite dry. It's still, you can, it's cool feeling, and when something feels cool, it usually means that the paint is still drying. But I put masking tape in the hole to close that up, and so what happens when you prime a raw piece of wood, I don't know if you can see it, but it, when you put the primer on, it kind of brings out the grain of the wood and makes it very rough and, and textured feeling. So after you put a primer on, you have to sand it after it's dried in order to get it smooth again. And then you can pour your paint over it and all that and make sure and sand your edges, all that. But that's the purpose of putting a primer on wood is to seal it and then also to bring out that wood grain, which is, is that's what's going to happen when you put fresh paint on new wood that's not finished. It's going to bring out that grainy, rough, textured feeling. And that's why you prime it and sand it and then it's a smooth coat. Now like MDF, is a man-made material but it's like super firm and it's actually as strong as wood if not stronger. MDF can be primed but there will not be any wood grain on MDF because it's not real wood. It's manufactured wood but it's super tough and condensed and it does not get grainy feeling like real wood does. So I just wanted to show you that. So that will be another pour this week. And I want to show you, I found these at Michael's. They were a six pack and they're metal. They're metal discs and they're very, very flimsy. They're not like you can, you can kind of flex them a little bit, but I thought well, these would be great to pour on because they're not going to warp and do funky stuff and um, the backs of them have a stand or they have the little thing where you can hang it and so I thought that was kind of interesting so it's a it's smaller than a vinyl record I guess you would say or about the same size um, let's see how big it is it's a little over 10 inches 
and so I thought I've got a festival in two weeks and I thought this would be something interesting I can just pour on that's really simple and do a couple of pretty pours but you need to prime it. excuse me you need to prime it because it is metal so I spray primed this and it's nice and super smooth and so now it's got something my paint will want to stick to and I've taped the back so that that doesn't flop around while I'm doing the pour and all of that but I'll probably pour these when I do the wooden clock so I just wanted to show you these these were a six pack and they were on sale for twelve dollars so roughly they're two dollars a piece but they already come with a stand and you don't have to worry about that so besides using Arteza, I'm also going to use Oatrol Easy Flow, which is just like Floetrol, but it's the European version. And it is super fluid. It, it dries smooth. It's just very good quality. I actually prefer it over Floetrol. But this is harder to get in the United States. You can get it either from Oatrol's website or from Amazon. And um, this is a two and a half liter. And they are very gracious in sending me free product to show you. But this is for people, especially that live outside of the United States, that cannot get Floetrol. This is another great option in case you can't get Floetrol. So that's what I'm going to be using today with my Arteza paints. It's a great combination, Arteza and Oatrol. And then I'll add water, and in my water bottle it's 90% water, 10% Oatrol, so it's kind of a milky white water, and that's the way I do that. So I'm going to stop talking and open all these up and get them ready and mix my colors, and then we'll get back to going in just a few minutes. One other thing I forgot to mention is there should be a coupon link below this video if you want to try out the Arteza. Uh, there'll be a coupon code that you can use if you click on it and um, hopefully you can get 10% off. At least maybe that would cover free shipping or something like that. So make sure to check on the uh, Arteza affiliate link below my video. Okay, I finished mixed them, mixing them all, and so the colors I used was emerald green with a little bit of Prussian green in it, mid yellow, orange yellow. This was mostly mauve pale, which was a basically a lighter purple, and I added the violet, which was a really dark purple. This one is uh, mostly scarlet red with a little crimson red added to it. This was cobalt blue and I added some ultramarine blue. I think I'm going to still keep adding just a little bit more. I want it a little bit more vivid. And then I'm going to add OGX to my colors. And then I'm also going to use white. White is going to be my one uh, paint that does not have OGX in it. Everything else will have OGX. And I'm trying to decide, <clears throat> I want the, all of them really to kind of be cohesive in some way or another. So I'm trying to decide how I want to do these pores. And you always make sure to mix your paint up and have it ready to go before you add OGX. And you add OGX at the very, very end where you put a tiny drop in your colors and you barely stir it. So you want to make sure that your paint is totally mixed up and stirred very well before you add your OGX. I'm not doing a pump. I'm doing one drop. That's all. 
OGX Coconut Milk anti breakage Serum. Dimethicone is the ingredient, ingredient in that that makes it extra special. So a few stirs is all you need. I'm going to take all my sticks out. I've got a large cup of white here.
Okay, so now you can see kind of at the end there's a purpley red one, then the red orange, then the orange, orange yellow, yellow with a little bit of orange, yellow green, more green with a little bit of blue and yellow, green and white, blue and white, blue and purple, super purple and blue, and then purple and white, red and white, and then yellow and white mostly. So, and then here's the super orange one. So I've got 14 very bold and it represents pretty much all the colors beside kind of the color that it goes with the best. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And like I have one drop here that is really dark. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to take it out. So if you see something you don't like and you're not sure what it is, cover it up, you know? It's like, you know, if I drip something on a canvas from another canvas, I can just cover it up. This has a little bit of green here that I really don't want. I mean, it has yellow in it. So I'm just going to go over that with a little blue and white. And if you have some lighter areas, you know, where the paint kind of leaves the edge of the canvas, you can just kind of add it, keep touching it on there, that kind of thing. Even with teeny tiny canvases, you know, sometimes the edges get a little light with the paint where you can kind of see down to the canvas. So that's just where you touch back up with whatever colors you're using. So I hope you enjoyed it. I did. Check out Arteza. It's a really fabulous acrylic paint company. They have canvases and I pretty much love their acrylic paints. That's what I love about Arteza. So check them out. See if there's anything you like. And make sure to check out the coupon below. I mean, uh, yeah, below the video. And I'll also list the colors that I used in case you want to try something like this. I'll list the Arteza colors. <clears throat> so, uh, Check out PayPal if you want to make a donation. I have a Patreon account if you want to come over and join Patreon and be one of my patrons and get to uh, experience some of the perks of that. A monthly video just for you of Q&A or whatever I'm asked from those patrons specifically on that page. It's not going to be on YouTube. And um, there's an Amazon link with all the products that I recommend. So there is, there's a lot of stuff listed below the video. So always make sure to check that out if you want to. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Okay, so... Here's my experience with the many four inch canvases. Um, you know, they're super small and you have to use something that's going to give you some great large cells, which I did. I used the OGX. But I just want to point out to you that the canvas is glued onto the wood frame. It does not come around to the back because they don't have it. There's just no way they can do it with a four inch canvas. So you see how the edges with acrylic pouring, it drew the canvas up. And like here, the paint just kind of stopped because the canvas got pulled up along the edge there. And so the paint drew in with the canvas. 
So it's stuff that can be touched up, but I do not highly recommend painting acrylic pours on four inch canvases. They're probably better just for straight out artwork. Um, not that I don't love the mini canvases, and it's not the Arteza. It was also on another brand that I got. They're all glued. Like for instance, this instance, this is one I tried out that I had gotten from Michaels or wherever, and it's glued on the edges too. But as you can see, I don't know it right there that shows you how because the acrylic pour makes the canvas pull or stretch you get that thing where because it's just glued to the edges it moves now it's dry and it's you know it's still glued on there but you see that gap where the canvas stops and the, the, you see the edge of the wood so um, because acrylic pouring is going to make your canvas do things that you typically would not have it do because your canvas is stretched all the way to the back on a, you know, on a regular canvas. Let me find one here. So here's the uh, Take Flight one and I'm going to resin this. And I've, well, I've got it taped on the back, but underneath that tape it is stapled. So the staples hold your canvas, but with four inch mini canvases they're glued and it's not going to hold all the time. And what happens is you get these little bit of edges that show here and there. And like here I put my finger in it because the canvas had, the canvas had pulled away from the edge and the paint got really thick in the center and all the others are dry but this one was not so you can see it's still a little wet because it's shining but um, that is what happens very clearly there so I just want to show you that